Hello, hello, hello everyone. How's everyone today? Guys, this is our last tip in our self-care series. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I actually saved this one for last because it's my most favorite one. It's the most favorite one for me because I practice this daily. And our tip number 15 is gratitude. Again, even though this is a part of my daily life, I wanted to do the research on this to be sure that I am bringing to you guys information that I may not have, things that I don't know, because when you're practicing something day in, day out, sometimes you miss a few things. So again, I have my cheat sheet here, so I am gonna be reading some of this out to you guys. Gratitude, again, my most favorite, favorite topic. Cultivating a habit of gratitude is a powerful way to enhance happiness, foster contentment, and improve overall well-being. Gratitude shifts your focus from what's lacking in your life to appreciating what you already have, helping to create a positive mindset. So my very first one is journaling. Set aside each time, sorry, set, it, set aside time each day to write down things you are regularly grateful for or that you are grateful for on that particular day. It could be a simple cup of tea or coffee, uh, supporting a friend or beautiful sunset, whatever it might be, set aside some time for doing that at, at those times. Many people find it helpful to do this in the morning, start of the day, or at night, the end of the day, for reflection. My personal preference is at the end of the day uh, because that's when I love to reflect. I do love sunsets, so I do it, if I can, out outdoors, when I can, outdoors. Some of the prompts for journaling. So if you have never journaled, if you don't know how to, or you think you're sitting there just writing all your thoughts, things like that, if you've never journaled, here are some prompts. What made you smile today? What small things went right for you today? Who in your life you're grateful for and why? Simple prompts that can help you start journaling. Meditation, again, another important one and a big part of um, being grateful is being able to be silent and listen. Clear your thoughts and just listen. So focus on feelings of gratitude during meditation. There are meditation apps and YouTube videos that offer guided sessions specifically designed to cultivate gratitude. Even a short five to 10 minutes gratitude meditation session can shift your mindset and, and elevate your mood, your mood. Now this says five to 10 minutes. For my, my um, viewers out here who can sit still for two, th two or three minutes, then start small. If you think it's a stretch for two minutes, start at two minutes. Just two minutes of silent time. And you can use the apps. I love some of the YouTube ones that are out there. You can use those and um, it'll help you with just clearing your mind and start meditating that way. And then move your way up to the 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes. Gratitude letters, guys. I love writing letters. Letters are not a thing anymore. And I remember growing up, we used to do a lot of that. So write a letter to someone who has had a positive impact on your life. It could be a friend, a family member, a teacher, a colleague, anyone in your life. You can either send the letter or read it to them in person. Expressing your gratitude directly enhances feelings of connection and joy for both you and the recipient. So 
letters are great. If you're a writer and you love to write, letters are still good. People love receiving letters, especially um, the older generation. I love receiving letters. I still love to write letters. I loved when we had that still. Now it's emails or just a quick text. Gratitude rituals. So here are some rituals you can incorporate. Incorporate gratitude into your daily routine by establishing small rituals. This could be a morning or even evening ritual where you silently express thanks for five things. This builds a habit of gratitude into the rhythm of your day, making it easier to keep up with. You can do it uh, before each meal, take a moment and be thankful for food or for the hands that prepared it each day by reflecting on what went well or appropriate that day. One of the other things that has worked for me, guys, is I tried, when I heard about a gratitude journal, I tried it for 30 days. I was in a leadership class and they said, can you write out what you're grateful for every day for the next 30 days? And I did, did that in August of 2022. From August 1st all the way to the last day, I wrote something I was grateful for. And it didn't have to be five things. It could have just been one thing. Sometimes it was just simply that I woke up this morning. So you don't have to think hard about what you're grateful for. There are a lot of great things around you that you can be grateful for. So try it for 30 days. Try journaling your gratitudes for 30 days and see how that goes for you. Then go for the whole year. Go for the whole year. In 2023, I wrote in my gratitude journal every single day, 365 days for 2023, I wrote something I was grateful for. And again, sometimes it's the same things that I've had before. Sometimes it's just waking up. Gratitude affirmations. I'm huge on affirmations and I love affirmations. Use positive affirmations that focus on gratitude to start your day or to reset your mindset when feeling stress. Affirmations are great. And if you don't know what an affirmation is, as simple as, I am worthy, I can do this. Simple things like that are affirmations. Doesn't have to be a big, you know, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a religious belief, it's an affirmation. Something you tell yourself to boost your self-esteem. Repeating these affirmations help you to create a mindset of abundance and contentment. Here are some examples that they gave us, that they gave me here in my research. I am grateful for the abundance in my life. Today, I am thankful for the simple joys that surround me. I appreciate and love and support those around me. So those are simple ones. It just depends on what you're going through that particular day and time. You want to be able to pick an affirmation that can help you with that. So if it's something you need to get out of, then pick an affirmation that you think would kind of stray your mind from it and bring you back grounded and focus on what you need to be doing. Gratitude and relationships. This is very important because I think sometimes we forget to tell our loved ones that we're grateful for them and why we're grateful for them. So expressing gratitude to others enhances personal relationships. Instead of taking things for granted, regularly acknowledge your appreciation for your partner, family, or friends. Gratitude fosters closeness and strengthens bonds. As people feel seen and valued when you acknowledge their positive actions. So for example, complimenting a friend or loved one for something they did to make a difference. Writing thank you notes and kind gestures no matter how small. But guys, there are so many others, okay? If you have a spouse, thank you for the meal. Thank you for cutting the lawn. Thank you for today. Parents. Thank you, mom and dad, for the way you've raised me. Thank you for the values you've instilled in me. For your siblings. Thank you for always being there for me. For friends, same. Now, these things may not be the same for you. I'm giving you examples again of things that, ha that I am grateful for. For the things that I say to my loved ones. 
for the things that I say to my team. When my team does something, I say thank you. If they close on a sale, I say thank you. I say thank you a million times a day. That's a little ex uh, exaggerating. But I say thank you all day long to the people around me. So just by looking, just by even saying thank you to my team, I put a smile on their face because they think that's their job and that's what they should be doing is doing these things or taking care of clients. And yes, it's part of their job, but they're doing it with me. They're helping me. So thank you. Those words are not really hard to say. And the other thing I just have to add on to this is, yes, we're talking about gratitude, but saying I'm sorry can also boost the other person, their mood, their, whatever's going on with them. So don't be afraid to say I'm sorry. Gratitude walks. Take a walk outside, ideally in nature. Nature is beautiful to refocus. Focus on the things that you appreciate while you're taking this walk. It could be the fresh air, the trees, the birds, or simply the fact that you're able to move freely. Or simply the fact that you are able to move freely. Combine mindfulness with gratitude by paying attention to your surroundings and finding beauty in the little things. This practice not only boosts physical well-being, but also refreshes your mind and provides a mental reset. So the reason I stressed on the fact that you're able to move freely, be grateful for that. There are so many people who are bedridden, who would love to take a walk outside, maybe on a wheelchair, but they don't have someone to take them. They don't have a nature walk close to where they are. Guys, this is a huge thing to be grateful for, to be great, grateful to see or to hear. I have a friend that's deaf and it's hard if she is not looking at me directly in front of me. Sometimes we go out and she's ahead of me and I'm, I'm calling on her and she can't hear me. So be grateful for just those things. There's so many things for us to be grateful for, okay? Gratitude reframes a negative event. Gratitude reframes a negative event. So when something negative happens, you try to find something positive. That's how you reframe it. So if you have something negative going on, you think about something, try to find a positive. Sometimes that's hard. And I know you're probably saying, again, really? If something negative is happening, what is there to be positive about? Guys, there's always something to be positive about. When you start shifting your mindset solely onto a positive world, you will find positives in the negatives, okay? So find something positive out of that. If you're thinking, okay, maybe it's in the situation, there's nothing positive. What about the positive outcome? Everything happens for a reason, right? Some of us believe that, most of us believe that. So what was the positive outcome because you came out of that hole, you came out of that hell in the hallway and now you're in the light again. So what was the positive? There's always a positive in a negative. So be looking for that, whether it's while you're in the situation or when you're out of the situation, but you'll find a positive. This habit of reframing helps in cultivating resilience and a more positive outlook on life, even in difficult times. Example, if you're stuck in traffic, instead of getting frustrated, think of it as an extra time to listen to your favorite podcast or reflect on your day. I wanna give you a small example of something that recently happened to me. I started school and on my first day of school, I was 45 minutes late, 45 minutes late, guys. I am never late. I use the word never because I'm never late. 
and this day I am late. My GPS was rerouting me and rerouting me and I'm taking all these little farm roads and these little side roads and and it's taking me south when I should be going west and and I was my anxiety was getting up, up the better of me and I, I was thinking okay what's going on why am I and, and, and I was scared that I'm gonna be walking in late I'm gonna be missing something it's my first day and then I had to stop all the craziness that was happening in my head breathe and realize that whatever is happening, the GPS is rerouting me. So I had to know with the technology we have today, I have to know that something was happening in order for the GPS to reroute me. And once I could, I could slow down my brain, I turned up my music and I said, you know what? This is what it is. Whatever you're rerouting me from, I'm grateful. I'm grateful because what I found out later was that there was an accident, several accidents on the way that I'm supposed to be going, which was west. And I'm coming from east, supposed to be going west. There were accidents on those major freeways. Three accidents. And so it rerouted me away from the traffic, away from the shutdown freeways. And there I was. I got to class. I really didn't miss anything. They hadn't even started uh, introductions yet. So I really didn't miss a whole lot. So there's always a positive, always a positive. It took me away from traffic, that, that rerouting took me away from traffic that might have made me two hours late because the freeway was shut down. Okay? So always look for the positive in the negative. A gratitude jar box. I love this. This is not something I've ever done, but I actually love this and I want to try this. It says, write down things you're grateful for on a small slip of paper and place them in a jar or a box. Over time, you'll have a collection of positive moments to reflect on. This can also be shared with family or other groups for activities. On a difficult day, you can pull out a few slips and remind yourself of the good life the good in your life or the good life you do have. It creates a visual and tangible reminder of the abundance of positive experiences in your life. And I love that. I love the jar, the gratitude jar box. And I'm going to, I'm going to start that teaching gratitude to children. So this is super important. This, our children should start learning this from a very young age so that when as they as they grow older they're going to put gratitude into practice okay if you don't know come across adults that really don't know what really gratitude is how to be grateful so encourage your children to practice gratitude by involving them in activities like the gratitude journal gratitude art project or daily thank yous writing those thank yous out, telling those thank yous out, um, or even the jar box. I love that. So you could even start that with your kids. Children learn by observing. Children learn by observing. It goes back to all of the saying, lead by example, follow the leader, things like that. Okay. If they see adults regularly expressing gratitude, they're more likely to adopt the practice. So you've got to do it and they're going to see it's a way of life. It's just part of life. Teaching kids gratitude fosters kindness, empathy, and appreciation from an early age, setting a strong foundation for their emotional development. Here are some of the benefits for practicing gratitude. It increases happiness, Focus on what you're grateful for enhances feelings of joy and satisfaction. It reduces stress. Gratitude shifts attention away from worries and negative thoughts, lowering cortisol levels and calming the mind. We talked about cortisol levels in one of the previous tips. Improve mental health. It can alleviate symptoms of depression and anxiety by promoting a positive outlook and reducing feelings of envy and resentment. 
Stronger relationships expressed in gratitude strengthens connection with others, fostering trust and mutual respect. Boost in resilience. Regular gratitude helps people bounce back from the adversity by fostering a sense of hope and optimism. And so this is actually the end of our self-care series. We have a lot more stuff in store for you. If you have thoughts, comments, please share them with me. If you're looking for a topic uh, to be discussed on here, please share those with me. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I am Sabrina Hussein, and I am at the beautiful Brasolia studio. The studio is located in Mesquite, Texas. We are hopefully soon going to have locations in other places. But right now we're in Mesquite, Texas. We are on one of the setting. I'm, I'm sitting here on one of the setting, but this room has different settings. There's a green screen. There's lots of different things that you can do in this room. It's ready for you to do your videos like this, your video ads if you have a business, or if you have a podcast, this room is ready for you. So please give us a call. Give me, send me a comment, but most of all, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment on these videos so that we can keep it going. I thank you guys for, for watching this series, for sticking with all the episodes. For those of you who have seen all 15 episodes, I am super grateful for each and every one of you. And if you have questions, you need resources, you need anything, please reach out to me. This is Sabrina Hussein. Until next time, bye-bye.